Hello, I'm Ilash Ravinsky and you're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them and tell you everything you need to know. Now, the fact that Russia is almost corroded through by corruption seems to be public knowledge. Well, public knowledge to everyone except the Russians themselves. It's hard to say why the Kremlin regime chose to start tackling corruption in the military now, but some believe that it might be because of the poor performance of the Russian armed forces in Ukraine, with a staggering cost in blood and treasure has translated into little actual results. After all, taking small, almost nameless villages may impress military bloggers, but it doesn't exactly bring Moscow closer to achieving actual strategic objectives, right? And now, Russian imperialists are dreaming about quote-unquote taking Kharkiv, discussing the prospects for encircling the city and turning it into what they call a second Grozny, with no mind paid to the horrifying human toll that would entail Russia in a nutshell. Маленькое замечание. Давайте. Да не надо из Харькова устраивать второй Грозный. Надо взять его в кольцо и устроить блокаду. Не надо вести улик, втягиваться в уличные бои, боже мой. Александр Николаевич, ну тогда мы рискуем получить э, видеокадры э, тех мирных жителей, которые не успели оттуда выйти, и которых украинская армия не будет оттуда выпускать. Слушай, ну у нас это было уже. детей, Вань, Вань. стариков Вань и так далее. это было все. На зов стали это было, и чего? Это помешало нам освободить это. Ну, масштабы Мариуполя, масштабы Харьковского So yeah, we're going to commit war crimes, we're not even hiding it anymore. It seems to be the prevailing narrative on Russian media right now. Meanwhile, Russian general Yuri Kuznetsov has been arrested on charges of taking a bribe. The officer, who oversaw the Russian Defense Ministry's personnel department, allegedly received money under the table for performing certain favors for businesses. According to Komyasan, the case involves appointments to positions in the ministry. In connection with the charges and the arrests, Kuznetsov's house and office were both searched, leading to the discovery of over 100 million rubles in cash, which is about 1 million US dollars, still a respectable amount, right? In addition to that, lots of foreign currency has also been found. In late April, Russian Deputy Defense Minister Timur Ivanov was arrested on the same charges. At the time, AFP wrote that his detention was personally reported to Vladimir Putin. Ivanov was also accused of involvement in large-scale corruption efforts. The charges against him carry a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison. The boss of the whole shebang, Sergei Shoigu, has only lost his office for now. But we'll see what happens. Things might still get ridiculous down the line. After once again securing the support of the Russian nation in what the Kremlin chose to call a presidential election, Vladimir Putin rolled up his sleeves and began remaking his government. Well, remaking might be too big of a word. After all, from the bigwigs, only Shoigu fell into disgrace for the time being. Now, let's take a look at a Russian cabinet meeting. The table, long enough to land jetliners, with the brilliant son of the nation at the head, and all around him his quote-unquote ministers sitting around like school children, always delighted, no matter what they hear. Принять необходимые кадровые решения на уровне министерств и ведомств, с тем, чтобы команда была полностью сформирована и уверена и эффективно работала бы. Представление председателя правительства Российской Федерации. Мною подписан также сейчас указ о награждении государственными наградами коллег, которые отработали в прежнем составе правительства, отработали достойно. By the way, probably the most profitable career choice in Russia right now – cabinet maker, specializing in tables. Long, long tables. Putin himself dreams of a world in which he will sit at this table, but the officials he presides over are leaders of countries all across the globe, staring at him with untamed adoration. Unfortunately for him, the world is not so eager to make this dream a reality and end up just one big thief of the Russian Empire as a result. It looks as if the international community will not even leave Ukraine to be sacrificed at the altar of Russian ambitions, which was probably the idea that the Kremlin had to begin with. Well, it's not happening. Olaf Scholz has confirmed that Berlin would be transferring a third patriot system to Ukraine. For Germany, the decision was far from easy, as the country has very few of them. But the initiative could serve as an example for other countries. 
All this was said by the German Chancellor at the Security and Competitive Summit in Sweden. Let's take a look. For Ukraine as long as it takes. As you know, we decided to um, um, submit now a third Patriot system to Ukraine, which was a decision that was not that easy because we don't have uh, um, too much of it, of them, too many of them, but uh, it was important to do that and we hope that some other European countries will follow because in the end we need a lot of munition, artillery, tanks and uh, air defense and especially Patriot and the RST system from Germany, which will be most helpful. Well done. On the 14th of May, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg announced that Berlin would be transferring its third Patriot air defense system to Ukraine. The official also thanked the German government for supporting Ukraine. So this seems to be a move in the right direction. How about these Taurus missiles? You shouldn't allow them to simply rust in peace somewhere in a warehouse. Now, on Tuesday morning, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Kiev for an unannounced visit. This is already his fourth visit to Kiev since the beginning of the Russian invasion back in February 2022. Blinken's visit comes weeks after the US Congress finally approved a 61 billion US dollar aid package for Ukraine after months of delays. The assistance is expected to arrive at an accelerated pace now as Washington seeks to make up for the months the bill spent held up in Congress. But if you thought the visit was prim, proper and formal, think again. Politicians are people too. Let's see what Blinken got up to in Kiev. And boy, this might come across as a bit of a surprise. Wait, what kind of reality are we living in? Well, the one where a sitting US Secretary of State gets up on stage at a bar in Kiev to play Neil Young's Rockin' in the Free World. Blinken's guitar playing drew some criticism in light of the months of delay in US military aid. To quote one Ukrainian that was at the bar in question, we didn't understand anything, but we asked for rockets. Maybe that was Blinken's way of apologizing, who knows? It wouldn't be the first time that the audience came out disappointed because they expected the gig to be more, you know, heavy metal. To close out today's episode, we'd like to show you the latest in Russian propaganda. The Kremlin is now trying to push a narrative that the Ukrainian government doesn't care about its own people. Let's take a look, but be ready for industrial quantities of cringe. psychology you call this projection. You accuse others of something that you're likely to do yourself. Remember the mobilized Russian troops arriving at the front lines with no proper gear and also many of them were actually way, way past their prime. Another great example of totally idiotic Russian propaganda filmed in hopes that it will dissuade Ukrainians from defending their homeland. The funniest part is that the Russians are naturally praising it as brilliant. 
Also, did you know continued exposure to Kremlin narratives can help you develop lasting immunity? We're not just bringing you news and entertainment here at Break the Fake, we're literally giving you a cringe vaccine. Think about that. And with this, we end this episode of Break the Fake. Please stay with us here on TVP World for more continued health benefits and also more latest news and updates.